If you ask me what's the big feature in Lightroom 2, well I would have to answer it's the localized adjustments. These are fantastic. Let's go onto the develop module and right now we're looking at this image. Let me just hide this side panel. I'll just hit the little arrow key there to hide it and same with the top and bottom here. We'll just click those to hide the film strip and that will give us a maximum image here to look at. Well if we go under the um, develop module here and we see this brush we click on this brush and now we're going to see these options here and these options are for the localized adjustment or the retouch tool let me just collapse that arrow because this is how it looks by default and you'll see these settings here paint and we can paint different things exposure brightness saturation clarity or tint now if we want to look at these options in one place just twirl down that arrow there and then we see them. So we can choose to paint with an underexposure or an overexposure. Notice it just makes a little bit of change there. But as we click these, it gives us a, just a starting setting on these different types of tools, and they change. We could use tint, and notice it will reflect those different things as we select on them. So let's try the, and we could change the tint color, but let's go for an exposure. We're going to hit the plus, and we're going to increase it a little bit more. So what we want to do now is we're going to paint with an exposure. Now notice as we move the brush over, the image we see three circles. The one with the little crosshair on it, that's the center. The inner circle shows the size of the brush and the outer circle shows the softness. For example, I can use the left and right bracket keys to change the size of the brush or we can change it by dragging on the size here. So say we want to make it a little bit a little bit larger than that. It's actually a good idea just to work here. We can see what's happening and if we use the feather if we drop that down, you'll notice it's just a single uh, circle now because that means that it's actually a very, very hard edge. If we increase the size of that, we'll see two circles now, and that's showing the area that's feathering. So if we click, see how that's working, but it's just got a soft edge on it. Let's just undo that. So what we can do is on the Mac, we can actually use the Alt or the Option key with the bracket keys, the right and, bra and left bracket keys to increase the, change the softness or the feather of the brush. It's, it's not working right now in Windows and it's probably a thing because of the beta. I'm sure in the final version this will be working but that's what happens when you work with beta software. You can't expect everything to work perfectly right now because it's really here for you to evaluate it and to make suggestions to Adobe on how to make the program better. Alright, so let's make our feather a little bit bigger. And then all we're going to do now is we're just going to click and we're going to start dragging and painting. Notice as we paint here, we're adding this exposure to the whole foreground. Don't worry about it if it's too bright, that's okay. Right now we just want to see where we're painting and that's looking pretty good. We've pretty much got it all. Now it does have some image recognition there which helps it to stay within the bounds. Okay, so we've overdone it or just a little bit. Well, here's something that's really neat. See the little circle that's been left, that little dot here? When we roll over this, what it does is it brings up the mask. See that? And this mask is something that's created, which is where we work. And now if we click and we drag, if we go to the left, we can lower the effect of that. See that? All the way down, and you'll notice the amount slider changing as well. So we can just slide that around until we get it just where we want and make it a little bit more subtle. So if you want to look at the image before, and after you can see what's been done. If we want here we could just go back over our image, let's grab our brush tool again, let's grab that, click on it once and we can change the settings. So we could change the amount manually, increase it or drop it down. And that's what you need to do when you want to make this change. You click and select it and you'll notice that everything comes up on here, roll over it to show the mask. Now if you want to, say for example we went over and we masked the top here and you can see that we went over. Well, all we need to do is hit the Alt key or the Option key and paint, and that will do the opposite now. It will erase from that mask. And you can see that we've just painted it back, and now it's back how it was before. Now, let's click on this little circle once again to select it. Well, what if we want to change some things here? And we don't necessarily want to work with it with just the exposure. We want to change some of those settings. Well, let's drop the exposure down a little bit. We can increase the clarity. Let's just crank that clarity up a little bit. And notice we're just working just in that area. See, it's just working there. Maybe increase the brightness a little bit. And you can see we're adjusting that image independently now. We can even add some tint. We can click on there if we want to add, say, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of pink there. 
because of the uh, the sunset. So we'll click there on the pink and notice how it's changing inside the image there. All right, so say we don't want to do that. We can just undo that. Let's just go back to see we've undated, undone the color there. Well, what if we don't want to do that? We just wanted to have just a little bit of color at the bottom and not necessarily in the whole thing. All right, well, we'll just leave that adjustment as it is. To add a new adjustment, you just simply click New, and now it's going to create a new mask. So let's go under Tint. We'll click the color here. We've chosen. We're going to grab our pink color. And now we're just going to paint just at the bottom, but this time we're going to use a really soft brush. So let's just feather it all the way up. So we've got a very soft brush here, and then we're just going to paint with a little bit of pink along the bottom. Okay, there we go. We're just adding that there just to that grass, just to simulate some kind of a, a sunset effect. Notice we have a second dot appears now, and when we roll over that second dot, it's going to show that new mask that we've added. And it looks like we left a little bit out there, so we can paint in there, roll over again, and in a second it'll update to show us. All right, so say we're just going to click it once, and we don't like that, it's just a little too strong. We can just drag it down a little bit using the amount. Or, as you know, we can click and drag on that circle there to lower the effect of that. So we can just drag that across to the side. And now we've lowered the effectiveness, so it's still there, but we've got a little bit of pink at the bottom and not on the whole image. And you can see it just updated there. It took a second. Or well, we can click and increase the effect again. All right, so what else can we do here? Well, while we're working in here, as you notice that when we go in here and we select these brush settings here, it can be a little bit of a, a pain to adjust it all the time. So maybe a lot of the time you're going to work with one very soft brush that you want to use, and then maybe you're going to use a harder brush. Well, we can save our brushes by clicking on the second one, and notice at any time we can go backwards and forwards, and it's going to go to the last used brush out of those two. And we've got this little heart here. I'm not sure why they're using hearts. Maybe because they love the localized adjustments. I know I do, so that's probably why they put the little love hearts here. So we can increase the feather just a little bit, and notice the auto mask. What that does is it tries to detect those edges, and we can drop the density down a little bit here. And if we wanted, we could work with a second brush now, and we could just paint out these areas where we want to add some detail. We could hit the Alt key, and we could take away from it up here on the road. We don't want to make that pink. And you can see those adjustments are happening now, and go in there, drop it down just a little bit. And you can see the kind of fun we can have with this, just going backwards and forwards. Now at any time, we can just hit the reset button, boom, and that'll reset our image back how it was if we're not happy with those adjustments. We can make more adjustments anytime. We can hit the new or the edit. Now editing is interesting. Let me just undo that. So we're going to undo the reset part, bring them all back in. And notice editing there is just exactly the same. We can hit new or we can hit edit, and edit just selects whichever one of these is active. You'll notice that it has the two circles when it's active and just one circle when it's there. So the selected one shows the two circles and we can make those changes. And at any time we can erase these brush settings. Just hit erase and it just goes back to our to our, our default image. So we'll go back there and we can hit add if we want and we can add some more effects to it. So let's add the density here. We're going to change the size and you can see those different kinds of settings. And at any time, too, we can just click here, and we can turn off the adjustment without deleting it, and at any time, we just turn it back on. It's just like a light switch. So we can temporarily see what our image looks like with and without. One of the other things you'll notice, too, in the retouch panel is that our other tools here, like our cropping and our, our spot removal and our red eye have now been moved. They used to be down the bottom here, and now they're up here inside this retouch panel.